Hi folks, when my alarm goes off at 3.30 in the morning, it can only really mean one thing, a travel challenge. So the big plan for the challenge is to use ScotRail to try and visit every city in Scotland within a single day. There are seven of them in total, and we are starting off here in what is officially the oldest city in Scotland, Dundee. Now I'm a wee bit nervous about this one because things are quite tight. We've got seven journeys and six connections. If I miss just one of those connections, this whole challenge could be over before it's really started. I've just had a last minute idea to maybe try and pick up a memento in each of the cities, like a postcard or a fridge magnet or something, and that'll spice things up a bit, making those connections even tighter. Here's our very first train of the day and it's on time folks, the 602 from Dundee to Edinburgh. is coming towards the end of journey number one. We're almost to Edinburgh Waverley. We've got about half an hour there and then we're jumping on a train to Glasgow. So welcome to a very sunny Edinburgh. Our first stop of the day in Scotland's second biggest city. We've got about half an hour here and the fact we're on time, that gives me loads of time to get some breakfast as well. Oh no, forget breakfast, because I've almost already forgotten my other challenge, which is to pick up a souvenir from each city. Let's see what we can find in Edinburgh. Right, that's no good. The first souvenir store is still closed. But one of the great things about exiting this way up the Waverley Steps is you get a beautiful view of the city. So for so many visitors to Edinburgh, that's the first view they'll get coming up Waverley Steps next to the Balmoral Hotel and then you turn left onto Princess Street and you've got the castle and the Scott Monument beyond. It is absolutely stunning. But for me, still no breakfast and still no souvenir. I've got to get my priorities right. That's what we're looking for. Right, Greg's to the rescue. I'll need to wait till I'm on board the next train though before I start eating it. That'll do, didn't want to spend a fiver, but there we go. 
Right, the 0815 to Glasgow seems like our best option. It is one of the shorter routes today, but it'll be the most expensive ticket. It's a peak service between the two major cities, so it's kind of understandable. I'm pretty sure this is the next train, even though it still says Edinburgh on it. I'm sure this is going to Glasgow. Right, this is definitely the right train. We're on the Glasgow train. I've got my own little compartment here. This train's massive. I really do like travelling on ScotRail, but the only thing is you've got to look carefully for clean windows. The train journey between Edinburgh and Glasgow, it's not too scenic, I'm afraid. The best bit is probably the departure from Waverley, passing right under Castle Rock. Welcome to Glasgow Queen Street, another journey, another on time. I don't want to jinx anything, but ScotRail are doing well so far. Right, so we've arrived at Glasgow's Queen Street station. That's one of two stations in Glasgow, they've got Central as well. But this one's right on George Square. And there's something I didn't know about that I want to have a look at here. Queen Street Station got a nice renovation a couple of years back and it's looking a lot better than it used to. But we just need to head over to the other side of George Square to the city chambers and let's see if we can find what we're looking for. Morning pigeons. Okay, so way up there is exactly what I was looking for. Come on, who else apart from me has stared up at the facade of the city chambers? without noticing the miniature Statue of Liberty looking out over George Square. Right, now to try and find something Glasgow related. I don't know this city too well, which is shameful because I was born here. But this is our shortest connection, and I'm not quite sure where to go. I was going to go into the Gallery of Modern Art, but it's not open yet, which is a shame. Because I know they'd have a little gift shop and it's really cool. I've got about 15 minutes till my train. I see Glasgow mentioned everywhere. This is like Challenge Annika. Hey, this is Buchanan Street, kind of like the main shopping street of Glasgow. There must be something here. Yes, I found the tourist information. They've got a little sticker and a rubber. Now back to the station. Right, we're back at Queen Street High Level and we are looking for the Aberdeen train but we'll be getting off at the first stop at Stirling, Platform 5. We're on one of the nice big intercities this time. Let's find a seat. This train will now go on all the way up the coast to Aberdeen, but I've got off at the first stop. 
that was the shortest hop of the day from Glasgow up to Stirling. It was beautiful rural scenery as soon as you come out of Glasgow. Now I've got quite a long connection here, I've got about 50 minutes. So we shouldn't be under any pressure at all to find a souvenir. Well there's certainly not much to see at Stirling Station at the moment, but welcome to Stirling, Scotland's smallest city. It's got a population of around about 38,000, which actually puts it down in 19th place of cities and towns in Scotland by population. Well this is another city that I don't know too well, so thank goodness for this map. I've been to Stirling Castle before, that's got a beautiful location. And of course the Wallace Monument that I've got a previous video on. But it's time to find a souvenir. Yeah, we seem to be walking around the city centre streets, but I'm not quite sure where I'm going to find something with Stirling branded on it. No, turn round Steve. It's an absolutely stunning place, but again, I'm getting sidetracked. What I'll probably do is the same that I did in Glasgow and try and find a little tourist information or something. So as we search the streets of Stirling, let's just recap where we're at so far. So we started in Dundee at 6 o'clock in the morning, we went down to Edinburgh, across to Glasgow and then back up to here in Stirling. And it's still only 10.45 in the morning, so we're doing really well. But we've still got some really long sections to come, we've got to get up to Perth, then all the way to Inverness, back down to Aberdeen and Dundee. So there's still loads to happen today, folks. Stirling's one of these places I always think that's got a perfect location and there's some parts of the city are absolutely gorgeous. I just don't rate the city centre much at all. So if you're coming here, make sure you do your research and you'll find some gorgeous locations. I wish I could explore, but I just don't have time. Boy, I'm really struggling here. I can't find anything. I think the fact that the city centre itself is not that touristy in Stirling, all the attractions are kind of outlying. I can't even find a postcard. And when I got to the tourist information, it was either closed or I couldn't find the right building. I'm going to fail, folks. At last I've found something. Right, I've got to get back to this train station. I'm running really late. Sterling kind of flattered to deceive. There were so many shops, but I couldn't find anything appropriate. I'm so glad I've made it back to the train station on time. Here we go for another short hop, only half an hour this one, and we'll be in Perth, and when we get to Perth we've got a longer connection, so at last, can maybe get some lunch. This is a busy train, I wish I could just swipe my ticket and upgrade to first class. Welcome to Perth, that was a stunning little leg up from Stirling. I just stood in the vestibule as the train was really busy, but I was kind of darting from side to side looking at the views. Absolutely beautiful. What a day still as well. As you can see, Perth's got this gorgeous historic looking railway station, and it was actually used as a filming location in the movie The Railway Man, where it represented Crewe in Edinburgh in the 1960s, and you can really see why.
unfortunately though Perth was also up for a carbuncle award in 2015 and it's because of this monstrosity of a footbridge in front of me it just doesn't fit in with the architecture at all I can see why they had to make it but come on guys you could have put in some effort Ah, okay, I remember this station. I was pretty sure I haven't been here before, but I'm sure I picked my dad up off the train here. I've got an hour until the next train, and that'll be the two-hour leg up to Inverness. That'll be the longest of the day. So I better get myself some lunch. It's quite funny, everywhere I go today seems eerily quiet. Remember, this is a tour of cities. Aye, Scottish cities. All right, result. Just you wait to see the souvenir I got from Perth. It cost one pound. What else have I found? Murray's Bakers, World Scotch Pie Champion 2015. Yes, please. Just like Stirling, Perth's another place with a very colourful city centre, shall we say. Saw a few characters there, but just five steps outside it and you're back in these gorgeous places. Look at this church up at the top, it looks like the Wallace Monument. To be fair, Perth station looks like nothing from outside, but it's not until you actually get inside at the platforms, it's gorgeous.
Welcome to Inverness where we've got blue sky and rain. That was a beautiful journey. Okay, it's not quite West Highland line, but it's not far off. We're into hour nine now and I'm really starting to feel it. I had thought the train from Perth to Inverness was the long one, but in fact, Inverness to Aberdeen takes about 20 minutes longer than that. But the good thing is, I have found a gift shop. Well, Inverness is not my favourite city, but boy is she looking good today in the sun. Despite my love of this part of the world, the Inverness to Aberdeen leg is much better explored by car, as the view out the train window is not overly interesting. Either that, or I'm just too tired to care. Here we are folks, after almost 14 hours on the road, or should I say 14 hours on the rails, we've made it to Aberdeen, our seventh city of the day. But the game isn't over yet, we've still got stuff to buy, and then we're going to close that loop back to Dundee. I've got to pick up the van after all. Right, please WH Smith have postcards, or something. Edinburgh? No, I need Aberdeen. I need Aberdeen. There's nothing Aberdeen. Oh no. Okay, so all I could get is this horrible postcard. But I was lucky even to get that, and I don't care anyway, this counts. The problem's going to be when I get to Dundee and it's going to be about 10pm. I've still got to buy something there. Wish me luck. Aberdeen train station is just about five minutes walk from the harbour, and that's also where the Northlink ferry departs for Orkney and Shetland. But tonight, that ship has sailed. Just before we jump on that last train back to Dundee, if I was to sum up today, what I would say is, despite all the jokes about British rail travel and trains being late, I might as well have been in Germany or Switzerland today. Every single train has been bang on time for both departure and arrival. And everyone I've met from ScotRail has been fantastic, both on board and in the stations. Scott Rail, you're awesome. Would I do the challenge again? Probably not. Once is enough for that. I'm absolutely knackered. Let's get home. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Remember I said I'd tell you what I got in Perth for a pound? There it is. We've made it folks, it 
it's 10 p.m. The circle is complete, but the challenge isn't complete, is it? Oh no, I'm a glutton for punishment. We still need to find something in Dundee. I'm not joking, it feels like yesterday we were here. That was this morning. When all I want to do is go home, I'm staying true to the challenge, wandering around Dundee in the middle of the night. Right, Tesco is my final hope. Let's have a look. No way, no way. Oh, I can't believe we've done it guys. I'm actually in shock here. I'm so tired. I'm almost emotional. The challenge is complete. Yes. See you soon guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.